Hey guys, Shady Like a Tree here, and welcome into my review of Call of Duty Infinite Warfare. Uh, I have played the single player campaign in its entirety, and uh, I'm going to be bringing you not only some gameplay from the game, a little bit of footage, non spoiler footage, uh, but also my thoughts on the game and kind of how I thought it worked, what I thought didn't work. And uh, just my general thoughts of the game. So I hope you guys enjoy this. As always, the format goes, uh, this first little bit will be spoiler free. Um, I will try not to share any info about the game. So if you're trying to decide uh, whether or not you want to play the game or what you want to do or, um, you know, about the game, whether you want to get the single player or play it, um, you can totally do so without fear of, you know, having your experience ruined. There will be a big spoiler warning that will come much later. Um, and... You know, when that does come, you will know. And then after that, it is fair game and you are on your own um, for censoring the content because I am not going to censor after that point. I'm going to talk about the story and everything. But before we do that, I'll, I'll kind of give you a nice overview and kind of do my best to, to share with you whether or not I think this game is for you. So one of the first things I noticed off the bat when playing the game is that there is no training mission, however you feel about that. I found that not giving not giving a training mission um, really hurt the story. Um, I'm not going to get into too much details in that um, in this section, but in the next section I'll talk about that a little bit more. Um, but basically the gist is, is I didn't feel a very deep connection with the characters in the story, and I felt a training mission would have benefited or would have kind of greatly enhanced and improved those relationships. So um, no training mission to start it off. You're just kind of thrown into the fight. Um, kind of guns ablaze and it was a little awkward for me having been away from the franchise for a couple of years um, but at the end of the day it kind of eventually works itself out the space of this game really adds a new element to the franchise um, I, I really liked it in some aspects and some aspects I didn't but for the most part it really changed things up it made things different um, you know you get to play around in the galaxy and, and visit all of the you know the planets and non planets we're familiar with from earth to venus to mars and and kind of get a chance and a sense of their different elements and they all kind of have a, a secondary character in the story because kind of how you respond to the story and how you respond to the gameplay in those moments um you know you you don't think about it when you're on the planet but looking back and reflecting on it i noticed the how the different planets played and felt and that was something that i thought was really well done and something that added another layer to call of duty that we've not had before because we haven't had a whole lot of different environments sure we've had wall running before sure we've had other types of of combat um but that was something that was definitely different was you definitely got good space battles in here that was another thing um that there are a lot of space battles that you can partake in um it's kind of like ace combat zero in that sense um, and what was really nice was the seamless transition between the space missions and the boots on the grounds missions. Um, and I didn't even notice it. That was another thing I didn't notice. And that, that means it was really well done was it was something I didn't notice when I was playing. It wasn't something, oh, hey, here comes a space mission. I need to do all this stuff. Let's get my body ready for a space mission. No, it was just a seamless, like peaceful transition between the two no real loading screen just just active visuals now the visuals do get a bit repetitive and a little annoying at sometimes especially in the later stages of the game when you start to realize oh hey this is a loading this is basically a non-loading loading screen but it's still at the end of the day um it's still different it's still more it's still new um and it didn't really pull me out of the experience too much or at least enough that it it bothered me um, there's a lot of cool new tech, um, speaking of which right here is one of them. You can take take control of um, droids and bots and things like that, and you can wreck havoc behind enemy lines. Uh, right there, I self-destructed, and, and you, know, you see I get multiple kills right there. Um, there was also you know, sound weapons and other things. I found that my favorite gun in the game was this sound weapon shoddy that you could, once you leveled it up enough or found enough of the attachments, you could actually have the ammo like automatically... like. Um, replenish itself and so I was just like going like through the fire and flames shooting my shotgun at enemies emptying it out you know reloading and then just keeping going and going and going it felt a little overpowered but it was a lot of fun to play and um, it was certainly definitely uh, it was certainly different and definitely uh, a a 
style to play you know it's not just there's not just one way to play this game i found out there's not the assault rifle submachine gun get behind cover kill a few enemies push up a little bit etc etc you can go in guns blazing a little bit especially on the lower levels um and still have a good time and have kind of that call of duty experience if you will and speaking of that that sound weapon and the other weapons in the game one of the things that i really like about um, Call of Duty and the kind of direction they've taken is that they've in the last couple of games I feel like they've let you choose your own loadout for the campaign missions and no more are the days of oh hey this is a stealth mission you get a sniper rifle and a silenced pistol if you want to take a shotgun with your sniper rifle or if you want to take an SMG with your sniper rifle you can be all about it and do just that and that's what I really like is that there's the customization um, for your missions there's some weapons that I really liked um, that I was really glad I was able to, to constantly choose. And those were the weapons and those were the guns that I found myself using more and more, especially in the later missions as I kind of got accustomed to everything. I knew what I liked. I knew what I didn't. Um, I knew what attachments I liked. I knew what attachments I didn't like. And so it really worked out, um, in my favor that, um, you know, and, and it was one of the things I thought was a good idea and, and should be kind of a staple of, of games like this is that, um, we, you should be able to choose your own layout before each mission, um, or even say, I prefer this submachine gun over this submachine gun and not have to worry about it. But there was a lot of really cool tech, um, in this game. Um, I really liked that. You saw another piece of it there. I talked about that a, a minute ago, but just this game, the tech with the tech and the new features, especially with the weapons and kind of the things you can do with your kit were really great. And customizing that was a highly, um, important factor in that one of the things you'll notice from uh, right here is you'll notice that there's a bunch of different characters them um, I, I don't want to spoil too much but i will say that there are multinational characters there's americans there's brits there's irishmen uh, i think one of the one of the lead characters is lebanese um, there's even some iraqi characters i believe um, i believe one of the actors is actually i forget of which country but i know he's of middle eastern um, descent um and, and there's just a wide variety of accents and skin colors, and the diversity in this game is second to none. It's, I think, the best in any Call of Duty because no longer do we have the Brits and the Americans, you know, like we had in COD 4 and Modern Warfare 2 and Modern Warfare 3. Um, you know, we have NATO groups. We have, you know, essentially the world's leading countries, Canada, the United States, um, you know, Great Britain, France, Japan, China, all those countries have come together to kind of band together against a common enemy and, um, kind of, it's the, it's the earth defense force, if you will, um, that kind of come together and, and, and put aside their, the earthly differences for the, for the betterment of humanity and the earth. And I think that that's a really kind of bold statement. Well, maybe not a bold statement, but it's a really interesting statement. It's a good statement. And I think there's a character in this game for everyone, for sure. I wanted to now talk, take the time to talk about a couple of things that bothered me about the game. Um, first and foremost, um, I felt like there were a couple places later in the game and kind of in the middle where there were plenty of objects to get stuck on. Like I got stuck a little bit right there. Um, there was actually a couple of times, um, and it was earlier in this gameplay too, where I got stuck on a trash can or some sort of cylinder object and I got blown up by a grenade. Um, I, I had that happen to me a couple of times. Not It wasn't game-breaking. But it also wasn't something that, you know, I didn't notice. It, it pulled me out of the experience a little bit, but at the end of the day, um, it was just something that kind of came to mind and something that um, definitely I, th I thought could have been addressed a little bit better. Um, mantling is much better in this game than it has been, but, but that was just something that I noticed that there were some spots where I got stuck, where other characters were walking through doors and I couldn't walk through doors um, because of that, or I couldn't go around them, and it just felt like, well, why do I have to wait on this person who's walking really slow? The side missions in this game um, were something else I wanted to talk about. Um, basically, and, and you'll see some gameplay of that here in a moment, but um, basically the side mission goes, um, you know, it's, it's uh, they're space combat games and, or missions where you try to essentially blow up ships of varying degrees. I felt them somewhat repetitive, um, but they were still fun and enjoyable. I did beat them all. Um, I'll talk more about, more about their outcomes and, and whatnot in the spoiler section of this kind of video, but, um, I just wanted to say that, um, I, they were definitely fun. They were definitely worthwhile. They didn't feel all that rewarding. Um, but there was still a fun, you know, extra, maybe half hour to an hour of gameplay. 
um, that, you know, I wouldn't have gotten had I ventured out and, and chosen to, to do those missions. So, um, here comes the spoiler warning and, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll take it from here. Spoiler warning. Everything will be told. Everything. So that was your spoiler warning. Um, now we're going to talk about all the things about the game that, um, I didn't cover in the first half of the game. There's a lot to go through, so I'm just going to jump right into it. Uh, basically, I found the first mission to be flat out stupid. Um, it's useless. It didn't really serve its purpose of being a training mission or setting up the main conflict of the game. It basically all it did was just say, "Hey, um, this is a bad guy. He's a bad guy because he's a bad guy," and yeah. So I didn't really feel the connection to that, and I, I think it missed its mark wholeheartedly. Um, I don't really know how to fix it other than to say that it just. It was just bad and a training mission there's no substitute for a good training mission where you can build some rapport with your characters and um it didn't really do that because everyone dies in that mission and you have no idea who they are or what they're about um i didn't really feel any connection to the characters and none of the deaths in the game really mattered to me um none of them none of them felt like impa none of them felt impactful or like they they despite their huge sacrifice that they were making for humanity um, the only one um, that kind of stood out to me was um, was the commander who was um, grabbed by the mech. I forget her name, but uh, she was grabbed by the mech and, and blown up essentially of her own volition. That was the only one that kind of touched on it. Um, Gator's death felt scripted. Um, Captain Reyes wasn't really in any jeopardy, I didn't feel like, in that moment. Um, I literally said when I was playing it, I was like, Gator, what did you do? I was completely behind the door. You stupid buffoon, you. Um, and he just got himself killed for no reason. And, um, you know, he just threw himself in front of those bullets unnecessary, I felt like. And that really just, I was just kind of like, he didn't have to die. But then I kind of saw the writing on the wall that everyone was going to die. And there was going to be, you know, no heroes, nobody left. And it started to kind of settle in on that for me. I talked about how in the um, first half of this video about how the ship assault missions were kind of repetitive and um, I didn't want to give too much of away but I felt like they should have had some bearing on the main game like uh, not once you know it would have been great if we would have had multiple endings where say if you didn't do one of those missions somebody dies or if you did them all everyone lives or maybe you get a slightly different outcome. Um, that would have been a good way to end the game. I think that would have been a much better way to play the game and give you some reward or feel like there was some reward for completing those missions other than to just tick off some task and get the trophy from the PlayStation Network and what have you. But um, that was a missed opportunity. I certainly feel like that really hurt my experience of the game. And I was, as I was thinking about it kind of during the game, I was like, I better do these because, you know, something could, these could be important and this could help me make the ending, ending mission a little bit easier. Um, but it certainly didn't feel that way. And it certainly to me felt like it, none of it really mattered all that much at the end of it. Um, the ending to me and, and I've and you know I've I've gone back and forth on the ending and kind of what it means and um kind of what I thought of it. Uh it it became obvious. I, I kind of figured um towards the end of the game, you know, with the last maybe half hour or so that I, I knew what was gonna happen. I, I kind of figured it out. Um I, I kind of realized everyone was going to inevitably going to die when Gator died because it just seemed like that was kind of forced. And I'm like, well at this point everyone's gonna die. Um and their deaths to air quotes progress the mission seemed like a waste since none of it really mattered at that point anyway. Uh, as I said, you know, a multiple ending game would have really benefited from it. Um, but uh, that was my main problem was that we were on the train to these rails to the scripted path that um, I felt like we were we were headed towards, um, and it didn't really serve the story. I, I felt like the story would have been better. Um, and the game would have been better had this had the game actually served the story and had the story served the game versus just having this predetermined oh everyone has to die kind of thing um, not that I'm not for everyone dying that's certainly you know I feel like their sacrifice was definitely you know a good one but because of because of some of the things I've already mentioned because of the lack of rapport because of um, a number of factors this game just falls flat on driving home any emotional impact um, and uh, you know, maybe one or two small tweaks could have certainly changed or fixed that. 
I do want to end uh, my kind of thoughts on the campaign um, and kind of the spoilery section of the campaign um, on kind of a positive note and say that I was glad that they included um, kind of the epilogue that they did. They showed that, um, uh, you know, they showed that the four crew members had lived and then everyone who died, they did kind of give them a, a nice little send off. If only they'd have paid that much attention to the detail of the story the rest of the game. I think it would have much been a much better game and a much better story. I, I was a little disappointed, but it's more good than bad, I think. This is an entertaining game. It was a lot of fun to play for me. Um, there are certainly some things I, I've suggested that could have been fixed or could have been better. Um, but at the end of the day, it's a good use of your time. And, um, you know, it's not the worst Call of Duty story, I think. Anyway, guys, I'm out of here. DFTBA, remember the Alamo. Thanks for watching, and I'll certainly see you next time.